I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Dan Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in National Life Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. This is FBC News. Tonight, Ben Ryan yet to finalize his starting lineup against Brazil match. Health Ministry records increase in oral health problems. And plans underway to set up a pediatric heart unit in Fiji. Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan has still not made a final decision on what his starting team will be that will take the field against host Brazil at the Diodoro Stadium on Wednesday. It is expected Ryan will decide based on the strength of the opposition on who starts each game. Vashnil Prasad reports. With only a couple of days before the Fijian men's sevens team get its campaign underway, the belief is all players are ready for a starting spot. To be honest, I've looked at all three teams and, and seen where we, you know, we're going to need to change around our tactics a little bit. And it will depend, I suppose, on how their journey's gone. You know, we might get into our last game knowing that we already won our group. We might go into our last game knowing we have to win it to get through. So there's there's quite a few permutations, I guess. But I'm very lucky that I've got a squad of 12 that. You know, you happily put any of them in the starting team. The team will go through two more training sessions today and tomorrow, both of which will be close to media. Through everything, our full repertoire probably, and then um, a repertoire, sorry, and then on, Mon on Sunday off, uh, have a massage, and then on Monday it'll be what we call a captain's run, where, but it's um, what I call a carousel. So we go through scrum line out, kick off, receive kick off penalty defence and they do that and then they change, we change the team round. Ryan believes all hard yard is done and the players are ready for battle ahead. Feel in really good shape, uh, they feel full of energy, they're rested, they feel like the diet's worked and the tapering has worked uh, and they feel unified. I'm standing inside the Diodore Stadium, it's quite an hour work from the main road where Fiji will play Brazil, Argentina and USA and who knows they could create a history come Friday. In Brazil, Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Major hospitals have recorded an increase in the number of oral cancers and other oral conditions. President Chia Chikonrote revealed this at the Fiji Dental Association's 40th Annual Conference at the Pearl Resort in Pacific Harbour last night. Sharon Shivan reports. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services is currently analysing data on oral conditions and President Chia Chikonrote says the results so far is a worrying trend for Fijians. It shows that more of our people are suffering from severe and life-threatening conditions in the mouth which are difficult to treat and cure. More analysis and research must go into addressing this emerging NCD threat. Oral condition is closely linked to the functions of other organs of the body such as kidney, liver and the heart, and also to conditions like diabetes and obesity. Fiji's leading advocate and champion in the campaign to reduce non-communicable diseases is urging everyone to emphasize on good oral health. The healthier our mouth, the less our exposure to pathogens and the healthier will be our organs and body. Patients who have chronic conditions, those with NCDs like diabetes and heart diseases already have compromised health statuses. That is to say their immune system and normal protective responses to infections are great or to infections are greatly weakened. President Conrote says focusing on the mouth, tooth decay and other oral conditions like oral cancers and oral pathologies inevitably lead to tooth loss and a diminished quality of life. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. In a bid to assist those with congenital heart disease defects, the Ministry of Health and Medical Services in partnership with the Sai Prema Foundation has brought in a specialist team from India. The team told FBC News it's, it plans to assist Fiji with a long-term solution. 
Rachel Nath has more. Medical services set up a pediatric heart unit in Fiji. Uh, the health personnel would be trained uh, in, in various specialties of pediatric cardiology, cardiac surgery, perfusion medicine, pediatric cardiac, ICU nursing, pediatric cardiac, uh, uh, OR nursing, and so on and so forth. One stressed when medical teams from overseas conduct operations in Fiji, it is not beneficial for the country on a long-term basis, hence the importance to open a self-reliant unit. We also recommended to the ministry that we would like to have a shadow cardiac unit here, as in they should identify someone, a surgeon for example, who is uh, interested in being uh, trained in pediatric cardiac uh, surgery. If we really want a team uh, to get more training, they can take them to their centre in the near future, provide them with free training, free food, free accommodation, um, which is just amazing because we know that everything comes with a cost. But really, this um, hospital is going to do it free of cost. Katie Wan is heading the 10-member team that will be conducting open-heart surgeries in Fiji for the next three weeks. Rachel Na, FBC News. Police are looking for 58-year-old Ram Chandra of Tadirua outside Suva, who is missing from home since Monday. The man was reported missing by his daughter, who came in from Raki Raki, to check on him after several attempts to contact him were unsuccessful. Chandra was last seen leaving home for town on the 9th of June and has since failed to return home. Public with information on his whereabouts are requested to call Crime Stoppers on 919. Still to come on FPC News, FNPF shopping complex nears completion. And in tonight's successful Fijian segment, we look at how a farmer's disability did not hinder his success. Stay with us. Welcome back to FPC News. Now, political parties have a month to submit their comments on the proposed polling venues to the Fijian Elections Office. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim says the recently launched polling venue locator application will allow the parties to submit their comment on one venue at a time. A committee set by the Elections Office will then assess the comments before finalizing the list. They will come up with their recommendations for the venues for the next general election to the Supervisor of Elections and uh, I will then form another a short a small team to go through the same list again and we will then publish a, a, a provisional list every year from now until 2018. Saneem says the provisional list will allow the political parties to use the data and prepare for the 2018 general elections. A new shopping complex will open soon in the heart of the Suva City. Construction on the Fiji National Provident Fund shopping complex is nearing completion and is anticipated to open in October. Rachel Nath has more. Contractors of the Great Street Project in Suva will be handing over the building to the Fiji National Provident Fund this month. Chief Operating Officer Chachi Kurei says they will start fit out in the end of the month and are targeting to open in October, which will tie in with the 50th anniversary celebrations. At this stage, most of the key tenants have uh, agreed to come in, particularly the anchor tenants. The shopping complex will cater for some key brands such as New World IGA, Vodafone Fiji, BLK, Silver Bookshop, Gloria Jeans and Eagle Boys. Koroi says at this stage they have maintained the allocated 17 billion budget despite delays in the deadline. Meanwhile, the FNP of Downtown Boulevard is also under construction. This uh, property has been uh, there for 20 years, so it's time for us to re-look at the, the whole uh, feel of the, the place. Once completed, the back half of the building will contain the new customer service, employees and pensioners office, while the front half will contain retail outlets. Rachel Nath, FBC News. 
Fiji Broadcasting Corporation's annual fashion show, Project Chechemon Fashion Designer and Model Awards, was once again hailed a success. The show that was staged at the Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva last night featured seven local designers and 72 garments. Savara Tambua has more. Project Chechemon's second show once again gave aspiring models and fashion designers to exhibit their talents. The project is a spin-off from FBC TV's popular weekly show, Chechemon. We have kindred minds that can work together to establish our position in a highly competitive global market. The hotel and the fashion industry is a gentleman needs to be cultured and needs to be nurtured so that we are able to uh, uniquely develop our Fijian designs. Model of the year, Christina Nagan of Suva says when it comes to fashion, one must believe in themselves. Well, you just got to go and walk out there and show the world what you got. Like, just be yourself and you'll feel really great because that's what happens to me when I walk out there. I feel really wonderful. The designer of the year went to Chanel Kumar of Suva who also won the fantasy wear. Kumar says his inspiration has been his mom. I'm coming next year, definitely. I'm coming with ethnic and probably everything. Um, I'm still going to continue fashion designing. It's something that I love doing and I can't, can't stay without. So yeah, I'm going to keep on doing The three-piece collection award was won by Actelodia Flotoka. Ethnic Wear Award went to Siddhant Maharaj, who also won the Resort Wear Award. Palvi Singh of Suva took out the Evening Wear Award. The complete production of Project Chechemon will be aired on FBC TV on the 20th August. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. A person's physical disability should not be seen as a hindrance in life. In tonight's successful Fijian segment, we speak to 52-year-old Penny Toloi of Nasingatoka village in Rewa, who did not let his disability impede his success. Savara Tambua with Toloi's success story. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Penny Toloi's legs were amputated 25 years ago following an accident. Toloi, who is a former military officer, was involved in the unfortunate incident upon returning from his tour of duty to the Middle East in 1990. He was a casual worker at a cement factory in Lamy. I know how to wear trousers, I know how to wear shoes, and even climb a coconut tree because I was a soldier. But when I lost my legs, it was really hard for me to accept. However, what encouraged me are the words of advice from my Japanese physiotherapist who urged me to accept my condition. At the time of the incident, Penny was only 25 years of age and the thought of spending his entire life on a wheelchair was a nightmare. I spent three years at the Tamabu Hospital and was taught how to carry on with my day-to-day -day life. The experts taught me how to bath myself, how to use the washroom and even how to travel in a vehicle. I was also taught some carpentry works. The farmer says he was among other amputees who were fortunate to get expert help. I so motivated me. Some of them got both hands missing and a leg with others had both legs and arms missing but they were still continuing life as a normal person. That is when I made up my mind to come back to the village, have children, do some farming and run my own business. Toloi says that the famous saying behind every successful man stands a woman is true for him. He was nursed by a woman from his neighboring village who is to date supporting him in all ways. When I woke up from bed while admitted in hospital, I saw this lady. She called out my name and that time I was still single. Even when I was transferred to Tamavua Hospital, she still visited me. Later on, she then told me that she was ready to marry me if I was willing to do so. The father of a 23-year-old daughter says he got no support from his villagers. However, that did not dampen his spirit. He built his home from the compensation he received. <laughs> The thing I did was to readjust the equipments and my farming tools to suit my height. 
Now I do not have any difficulty in farming. In a day I can plant $60 suckers and 20 cassava seeding. No one helps me. This is my everyday duty. The Loisa produce are also sold at the silver market. He believes success comes after a lot of struggle. I am challenging you viewers never to lose hope when you come through any difficult situation. Or when there is no money, make use of your idle land. If I can do that, then why can't you? Toloi now runs a shop which is run by his wife and owns a pant used as water taxi by his fellow villagers. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne, I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Raki Raki. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome to FPC Sports and the Fijiana 7 side went down to Australia in its second pool match by 36-0 at the Olympics in Brazil. Coach Chris Cracknell says the match is done and dusted and the focus now turns to the last pool match against Colombia tomorrow morning. Vashnil Prasad reports. Like I said, you can't control these things um, and you know the referee's got to make the decision. They're under a lot of pressure, but at the same time, I expect, uh, and I think everybody, uh, the, uh, the people at home watching, uh, the players uh, expect consistency across the board. Got this group of girls are a bit better than that. They just didn't adapt. Uh, they didn't adapt to the referee. Um, and we didn't adapt to you know what was in front of us and what we needed. We want them playing a physical way, and you know they they weren't as physical as we wanted. Probably pretty angry after that performance, um, and I expect a backlash from them tomorrow. I win against the US yesterday, so it's, in, it's crucial that we win. And rugby play our way, uh, and we don't get caught up in a dogfight with Colombia. Well, the Fiji Sevens team will not be lacking support during the quest for medals at the Rio Olympics. This was quite clear today as the women's rugby side played at the Diodoro Stadium. Rohit Deo with this report from Brazil. Rugby, which is better known as rugby here in Brazil, drew a reasonable crowd for the opening day of Sevens competition. Amidst the fans was this group of Fijians who travelled from around the world to cheer their stars on. I think the, the men are already the favourites, aren't they? And uh, the girls are going to be the surprise. They are looking good. So, look out Australia! Fans have even travelled from Fiji to be part of the games. We're excited to be here to, um, to cheer for the Fijian boys and girls and also represent um, the, the Fiji fans that are not here. So we will be loud. I know they are loud on the TV while they're watching. We will be loud too. We will make sure everyone knows that we're here. Kunalanga, don't worry. The gold's coming back home. All you people in Nandi, Fiji, Suva, Kandavu, Lao, Panga, wherever you are, Fiji will come back with the gold. Go, Fiji, go! Go, Fiji, go! Go, Fiji, go! Go, Fiji, go! So the support of this kind is not only outside the stadium, but once the Fijiana takes the field inside the stadium, it is quite clear who the fans are cheering for. The support of this kind will be needed if we are to win our first goal. In Brazil, Rohit Deo for FBC Sports. Team Fiji's table tennis rep Sally Yi has failed to qualify for the first round of the women's single after her preliminary round earlier today. The Australian swimming team had a good start on day one of the swimming competition, bagging two gold medals. New Zealand keeps its knockout round hopes alive after edging Colombia 1-0 at the Miniaro Stadium. Australia is leading the Rio Olympics medal tally after day one of the competitions. Australia has two gold medals and a bronze medal, closely followed by Hungary, which has bagged two gold medals as well. United States, Korea and Japan are also in the top five with one gold medal each. The Fiji Football Referees Association is working hard in trying to lift the standard of officiating in the southern zone. 
This as a two-day cadet referee seminar to help the new match officials came to an end in Suva today. Melita Vanga reports. For the betterment of our local football referees, EGFA Referees Director Rakesh Varma says development at grassroots level in the sport is vital. They are trying to educate the young ones and bring the young ones into refereeing. Uh, this cadet referees program will now uh, create more challenge to the referees in Fiji. Southern referee president Munaf Basha says this seminar has benefited all participants. Fiji director Mr. Rakesh Verman who is based in Suva. So there is a lot of advantage for the southern referees. Because on Wednesdays we have our training here at the academic grounds from uh, half past five. And a lot of knowledge is being passed to our ref referees. FBC Sports also spoke to some participants on what they thought of the seminar. I love to be here and I like Mr. Verman and he's teaching us about referees and I'm very, I'm enjoying my course. Well, actually, uh, this uh, seminar has uh, given an enlightenment uh, in the way that uh, you see the game. Eh? I've learned a lot from Mr. Verman. He has teaches us some laws of the game and some of them are the field of play. The Around 35 participants from Nabu Rewa Suwa Naita Siri Masinu and Nusori were part of this seminar. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. Rainy conditions prevail throughout the country today. A trough of low pressure with associated cloud and rain remains slow moving over Fiji. It is expected to affect the group until Wednesday. Cool conditions were experienced in all centres today. Suva, Nandi and Lambasa recorded 27 degrees. Savu Savu was on 26 and Lotoka and Ba were the coolest on 23 degrees. Forecast to midnight tomorrow, occasional rain and few thunderstorms over most places. Isolated heavy falls are likely. And as for Tuesday, rain continuing. Recapping the headlines, Ben Ryan yet to finalize his starting lineup against Brazil match. Health Ministry records increase in oral health problems. And plans underway to set up a pediatric heart unit in Fiji. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question. And we are asking, should Ben Ryan be given Fijian citizenship? To answer, visit our FBC website. Do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News and if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrit Priyadarshni. Good night. I am Uriyan Khan Gurbo Talehuke. जैसे फेस्टिवल एग्रेड है गुरुवो में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है गुरुवो में एलिन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सायमा ने हमारे फेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर वन है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जेंट्स 